Hello, everybody. This is Randy Simmons from CATI. We're going to go ahead and get started. It's 2 o'clock. Um, I've got Chris Snyder helping on the webinar in the chat area. So if you uh, have any questions, please enter those in the chat. And uh, if, he's, if he knows the answer, he can answer them right away. Otherwise, I'll take a look at the messages at the end of the webinar. Um, I've got some web links that I'll have show in the presentation, and he'll also be posting those web links over in the chat, so you can copy and paste them if you want to, to look up later. Looking through the participant list, uh, quite a few names I recognize, so welcome to the former 3D Vision customers uh, into CATI and all the existing CATI customers. Glad we're all together now. So uh, we're going to get started. This uh, presentation is basically about what we learned at SolidWorks World 2018 that we went to back in February. The agenda, we're going to take a look at the top 10 enhancement request voting results. We'll take a look at the what's new in 2019 preview. We'll talk some about the new 3D experience tools and the announcements that were made at SolidWorks World about those. I'll show you guys how to access technical presentations from SolidWorks World, so if you didn't attend or even if you did, you can get access to those. And we'll talk about some other uh, interesting achievements and interesting highlights uh, that uh, CATI was involved in at SolidWorks World. So this year's SolidWorks World uh, was the 20th anniversary of SolidWorks World. Uh, over 5,000 attendees, over 200 technical sessions, and uh, 120 solution partners in the partner pavilion, uh, what they call it. So the first thing we're going to look at is the enhancement request voting results. A lot of people, unfortunately, don't even know that this is a thing. So every year, SolidWorks uh, gets over 6,000 enhancement requests directly from you guys, the users. Hopefully, you're turning those in. Um, and starting in November, they hold an open voting. Uh, this is on the SOLIDWORKS forums, so a lot, that's why I think maybe a lot of people don't know about it. You have to go look for this on the SOLIDWORKS forums in November. Um, so you guys all get to vote then on your favorites and what you would like to see implemented. Uh, by the way, since 2001, when they started doing this, 70% uh, of the things on these top 10 enhancement lists have been implemented in some version of the software or another. So very, very much proof that SOLIDWORKS is very user-driven. Um, there was something new in the voting this year, you see these num these uh, categories at the top, reliability, performance, and functionality. So when you went in to vote this, this past November, there was a slider bar at the top for this first question that you had to answer before you were allowed to continue on. And it, it was where you think that development should focus their resources more heavily on. Um, so re reliability, performance, and functionality. And this is how it shook down um, what people decided that they wanted. And it was even said in the session uh, that, I, that I attended where they revealed these results that the weight for improving reliability, which is quality of the software, is really even higher than that 43% shown uh, because a lot of the comments, uh, there was a place to put comments in here, and a lot of the comments indicated that people were confused on whether performance meant eliminating bugs and crashes or providing faster performance in SOLIDWORKS. So some of the people that voted for performance probably really meant to vote for reliability, they think. So, uh, probably closer to 50% of people say that SOLIDWORKS should focus on reliability and, you know, more like 50% uh, or a little less on functionality. So um, how, how do they find out about performance issues in the software? Well, you have to let them know. You either uh, report bugs through us or there's an option you can turn on um, to give feedback to SOLIDWORKS. You can turn it on right when you first install SOLIDWORKS, but I know a lot of you may not ever get to see that screen. So if you go in your system options general, you can turn on the checkbox that says help make SOLIDWORKS products better by automatically sending your log files to the so SOLIDWORKS Corporation. The funny thing is people are afraid of turning this on sometimes because they think it's going to be a performance problem. Um, we, it's actually capturing these files anyway. All the checkbox does is let it email the files to, uh, to SOLIDWORKS. So it's happening anyway in the background whether you like it or not. The checkbox just sends it in. Um, no personal information is sent other than what kind of hardware you're using and what the crash was and what you were doing when it happened. So the more people that, that turn that option on, the better they can get with reliability. Otherwise, they're totally reliant on people submitting bugs. Oops, sorry. So. Um, 
That is very important. Um, so hopefully you had a chance to read through this list of the results. Um, as always, some of these seem strange, right? And some of them are kind of unclear. There is a place for, for there was a place for comments when you were going through and reading these and doing the voting. You could read what people really intended. Uh, when you see the results like this, it's it's hard to understand what somebody meant on some of these. Um, I don't understand how a coatings feature could have got enough votes to be number two. Uh, this is just me personally talking. Uh, pretty shocked at number one. Also, uh, it would be neat to be able to do that, but really, you know, is is it that big of a deal? I, I, for some people, apparently, it is. Um, I really like number six. And number four in this list would be really cool enhancements that I personally have run into customers wanting to be able to do. So that is the results. Um, like I said earlier in the past, about 70% of the results on these top 10 enhancement requests uh, get implemented in, in, in the next couple of years in the software. So be on the lookout for some of these if it's possible. Right? All right. Uh, next thing we're going to take a look at is the what's hopefully new in SOLIDWORKS 2019. And the only reason we say hopefully is because, you know, it's it's a long time till 2019 gets released, uh, till uh, October. Um, they will start beta in June or July and let people bang around on these. But if something, you know, one of these functionalities doesn't doesn't live up to par, they it may be pulled out. And that has happened in the past. So at uh, the general sessions, they showed uh, previews of what's hopefully going to be new in 2019. And uh, that's what the next few slides are going to cover. So the first one I really like, this is great, uh, interference detection in multi-body parts. We're pushing more and more and more for people to use multi-body parts instead of assemblies in many situations, weldments, sheet metal, and lots of different times. It's much, much easier to use multi-body. Uh, so no more uh, cheating or, or workarounds of using the combined tool to almost get uh, interference detection. Um, you'll be able to do this now in any multi-body part, and it definitely supports weldments too, uh, which is, is the key there. Um, replace the subassembly with a part. We're able to do that with the Save As, but this is directly from the top level assembly, so from the tree, um, and then some of the details of, of what that will do for you that was shown. Um, this one was really cool at the bottom here, partial length chamfers and fillets. So kind of like if you've ever dealt with sheet metal, you can edit the profile of a sheet metal flange and drag it shorter to make it not run the whole length. Same way here um, on fillets and chamfers, since they are the same now, you'll be able to just grab a little ball on the ends of the, the line or the edge that you've selected and drag back. Uh, there's settings for distance and percentage and, and drag handles for that. So really neat for partial, partial length chamfers and fillets. Um, another neat thing they showed was being able to take an image and convert it to a mesh or a bump map. Um, there's controls in there for refinement and size and inversion. A lot of people are going to a separate software or something to get this and then trying to bring that into SOLIDWORKS. Um, NVIDIA, manufacturer of video cards that I know many of you are using, uh, came up with a new technology called the Denoiser uh, that's going to help in SOLIDWORKS Visualize. Uh, SOLIDWORKS Visualize is our tool for um, magazine quality renderings. And this was pretty crazy. Um, there's some examples down below. Uh, this uses machine learning. So they, they fed thousands of images uh, into this algorithm that they developed of here's what it looks like at a certain time of rendering and here's what it looks like at the final rendering. And it's able to uh, learn from that, they said, and interpolate uh, when you put a new picture in of what it's going to look like and show you a better preview while it's still cranking on the rendering in the background. Um, here's a close-up of, of that middle image, and it's pretty crazy. So just in a couple seconds, you're getting an amazing rendering like the one on the right um, with the denoiser turned on. It's what it's showing you because it's guessing at what those things are going to look like based on what it's seen in other pictures with those same lightings and materials. And it's actually still doing the full rendering in the background. Um, so it makes the preview faster, which is really what you want to be able to get your scene set and everything. And as a reminder, uh, you get a seat of SOLIDWORKS Visualize that can be installed even on someone else's machine, like a marketing person's machine. You get one of these with every seat of SOLIDWORKS Professional or Premium uh, that you have uh, on subscription. So in case you have not used Visualize or someone at your company hasn't used that, make sure you take advantage of those free seats of Visualize that are included with your seat of SOLIDWORKS. Some more new things. Um, 
these all kind of relate together. So the Microsoft Surface Dial uh, that's available on those devices will be be able to be used for Zoom Pan and Rotate inside of SolidWorks. Really cool for people that have that. And then they introduced some uh, touch and pen sketching inside of SolidWorks in 2017 or 18. Sorry. Um, in 2019, uh, we're going to be able to draw splines and slots on the screen and have those convert into real splines. Um, in 2018, right now, it's just currently lines and arcs. And then also along with that, you can write and draw right on the SOLIDWORKS screen for markups. I imagine this will be available in e-drawings as well. But either place, being able to just draw on the screen and do markups is, is pretty cool. Uh, virtual reality of models directly in SOLIDWORKS without having to render them out or go to some other tool first. Um, they also showed that the my.solidworks.com site is going to have a CAD models section. Um, I'm not sure if this is meant to replace 3D Content Central website and then they want you to go to mysolidworks.com now to get access to that. Um, I kind of think so. I don't think it's going to be an additional separate library, so uh, that's still to be seen. Uh, options to group mates by status in the tree. And then the picture here that's shown on this slide is something they showed of a, a, a massive D feature, they called it, uh, or silhouette representations to, to massively simplify down a big assembly uh, so that you can just show this in another floor layout or in, a, in another assembly, which is really cool for some of our customers that I know that need that. Uh, last slide here for the, the new, in 2019, functionality, component preview window enhancements. We've had that for a couple of releases, so some other things added to that. Um, there will be an option to automatically lock rotation on toolbox components always um, in your system options, I imagine, is where that will be. And then uh, a couple enhancements that they showed is coming for simulation. So the topology studies now have a factor of safety and frequency constraints that can be added. And there's a new mesh slice tool to be able to analyze a mesh better um, in the simulation tools. So those are the what's hopefully new things in 2019 that were shown. Of course, there will be many, many, many other enhancements. Those are the ones they chose to highlight on the main stage. So um, I actually had already done a blog on this, uh, on the 2019 what's new and the top 10 enhancements. Uh, you can go to this link to get to the blog on that. And uh, Chris will be putting this up in the chat, and you can copy and paste that out of the chat if you want to go to that so that I don't have to keep this up on the screen forever for you to write it down or something. Okay, so on day one of SolidWorks World, at the very first day, very first general session, everyone was hit with this huge presentation on the up-and-coming 3D Experience platform products and services. Um, this was done by the SolidWorks CEO, John Paolo. Um, he explained that users will have access to both desktop and cloud products. Desktop SolidWorks is not going anywhere. This is additional functionality. And uh, basically five new product announcements were made. First one of these is the 3D Experience Social Collaboration Services. So this is, uh, has been available inside the 3D Experience platform for the industrial designer tools and mechanical, conceptual tools, um, and and could be purchased and added into SolidWorks. So this is social media for your SolidWorks, basically, for you to be able to contribute back and forth with other designers and customers, if you want, or managers, you know, any stakeholder in the project, and, and uh, collaborate inside of SolidWorks, do nice screenshots. It runs over in the task pane inside of SolidWorks, and the big deal is that this is now not going to be a paid product anymore. This is going to be free for all SolidWorks subscription customers. Um, this will be coming in the June, July 2018 timeframe. It's not going to be new with 2019. It's, it's just something that's not totally ready yet. Um, it's actually waiting on a service pack of the 3D Experience platform for this to be available for everybody. So June, July, you will be able to turn this on um, and use collaboration over in the task pane. More of that, more to come on that, of course. Um, the next announcement on the 3D Experience tools was the 3D Experience PLM services, so product lifecycle management tool. Um, and this was designed really to take the confusion out of PLM. The great thing about it is nothing to install. It's all hosted on the cloud. Uh, right inside of SolidWorks there, the picture showing in the task pane, uh, you'll be able to do uh, product lifecycle management tools. 
Uh, we'll support everything from change management all the way to project planning uh, and very, very scalable. This, however, will not be available until sometime in the calendar year of 2019. It is in lighthouse testing uh, through all the way through 2018. So this is a little more in the future. As far as CAD designing um, with 3D Experience tools, they announced the SOLIDWORKS product designer. So this will be a CAD tool um, on the three, built on the 3D Experience platform, natively developed and runs on there, so uh, different than desktop SOLIDWORKS. However, it will be able to work with desktop SOLIDWORKS and share files back and forth. So the, the thing here is that uh, the application gets installed locally but the files are stored in the cloud, which makes it easier for sharing and then lends itself to PLM and, and PDM on the cloud, of course. So this will let you do parts assembly, sheet metal, motion simulation, drawings, the basic modeling functionality. Not to replace SOLIDWORKS as an alternative for people that need something like that. You may have also heard of a tool called X-Design. This was actually announced that they were working on this tool a couple of years ago at SOLIDWORKS World and has been talked about a little bit. This is not either going to be a replacement for SOLIDWORKS. It's going to be an alternative for SOLIDWORKS. Um, you'll still have SOLIDWORKS desktop uh, for not on the cloud, but this will be an, a cloud product. So this is a full-blown CAD tool built right on the 3D Experience platform. Um, the files and the software are all on the cloud. The great thing about that is you can use it on any device. It just runs in a browser. So from a tablet, you could be doing SOLIDWORKS designing, right? from a phone, I guess, as long as you can uh, touch, you know, and have a big enough screen to do that on, uh, you would be able to design. Uh, old, old hardware, you know, you won't have to have uh, great uh, hardware to be able to do designs or simulations. Won't that be nice, you know, just offload your simulation to, to this cloud-based product. So we'll see how that comes along. Um, some, of, some more of the highlights that I don't have up on this slide are uh, that it, um, was created with the end user experience in mind. Uh, CAD and non-CAD users alike can get up, up and running with minimal or no training. Uh, very innovative uh, features that improve the workflow. There's design guidance features. There's something going to be in it called a super feature. Uh, ability to cloud 3D print and connectivity to Fab Labs. Um, this tool, um, they said are, they're hoping to add 20 more Lighthouse customers by the end of 2018. So this definitely is not going to be available until 2019 either. But it is definitely uh, more advanced and, and, and almost here, just not yet. Um, the last announcements from the 3D Experience platform was the 3D Experience Marketplace Make. And this is an online e-commerce platform that provides businesses with on-demand manufacturing and intelligent part sourcing capabilities. So, um, this, there's two services that this will supply. There's a make and a, another tool called part supply. Uh, you'll be able to access them directly from within SOLIDWORKS. And there is a link there on the slide. Um, I don't have that one to be able to put in the chat, but it's pretty easy. Make.3dexperience.3ds.com if you want to find out more about this. This is available now. CATI is doing a blog series on these 3D experience announcements. It just started, uh, kicked off a couple weeks ago, and they're going to do uh, a series of blogs for those five announcements. This link here shown on the screen and the one that will be posted up in the chat in just a couple seconds is a link to the first blog in the series, and you can follow that and uh, find out a lot more about those five announcements that were made on the 3D experience platform. All right, so for those of you that did attend or even did not attend SOLIDWORKS World, how do you get access to the technical presentations and so on? Um, this is the link for that. So live.solidworks.com forward slash on demand, very easy one. Uh, you can also, of course, just search for this, Google search it. Um, so all these technical breakout sessions will be up there. Um, those have always been available in the past up there for SOLIDWORKS World, but, but they did a good job this year of also providing a lot of videos, uh, to things that were shown in the general session and highlights from all over SOLIDWORKS World. Um, they have some interviews with customers and interviews with employees of SOLIDWORKS World, some development people and stuff, to get some more insight into uh, some of the things that are going on.
So uh, live.solidworks.com, and you can download presentations and take a look at a lot of those videos. Um, out of those 200 technical presentations that were given at SolidWorks World, CATI employees actually presented 16 technical sessions at SolidWorks World this year. Uh, we had over 1,200 attendees in our 16 sessions, so uh, we definitely presented on the right things, apparently. Um, you can download our presentations and all of the material that goes with those from our website, and the link is provided here and will also be put in the chat for that. CATI did uh, get some awesome achievements at SolidWorks World this year. Uh, CATI was named top five worldwide in total licenses for 2017, top ten worldwide in total bookings for 2017, and we made the 90-90 subscription club, which means that uh, we have a better than 90% subscription renewal and better than 90% subscription attach rate for new seats of SolidWorks. So those are some of the milestones that, that SolidWorks tracks for the resellers, and we were able to hit uh, some good ones here. Um, another thing that uh, we wanted to tell you about is desktop metal. Um, so CATI is a partner with desktop metal. We are selling desktop metal printers, as well as all the uh, other 3D printers that we sell for plastic, plastics and so on. Um, desktop metal made a new, an announcement of some new technology that they have worked on at SolidWorks World, um, and it's generative design software. So kind of interesting, this was inspired by mimicking cellular growth in nature. Uh, it, it allows it to kind of grow apart to tell you what would be the best way to design this for 3D printing. So you feed in a ugly bracket that you've designed, and it can analyze that and say, well, for 3D printing, this would really be the strongest way you can build it. It may end up putting a hole in the middle of the part where you think it wouldn't. Um, because machines think differently than people do, it's, it's definitely not going to be something familiar to what you're thinking. Um, this is available now for SolidWorks subscription service customers. And uh, I like the quote here at the bottom uh, from the uh, software engineer that developed this at Desktop Metal. So, you know, no one, nobody sketches up a tree in nature. Uh, or designs the tree or puts it there. Everything starts with cells that grow. Uh, they're trying to mimic that uh, with this generative, generative design software so you can feed in a part and it can show you the best way to, to design that for 3D. Interesting technology. Some other awesome highlights uh, from, uh, according to us, at least, is that uh, the Northeast Ohio SolidWorks User Group won the User Group of the Year Award. Only one user group in the, in the world uh, gets to win that. And it is run and organized by our customer, CATI customer Beckett Gas in Cleveland, Ohio. So congratulations to them for winning the, the user group of the year in Northeast Ohio. Uh, CATI customer Ring Brothers, one of our great customers, uh, was featured on the main stage in one of the general sessions. They built this 1,000-horsepower uh, javelin that you see down here in the picture below. It was completely designed and manufactured in SolidWorks and SolidWorks CAM. Uh, and if you do any searching on the SolidWorks website for Ring Brothers or SolidWorks CAM, they are featured on a lot of the CAM videos, and you can find out more about this project there. But uh, they are a CATI customer. Another CATI customer, Boom Aerospace, was also featured on the main stage general session. They're trying to build a commercially viable supersonic aircraft. Uh, the Concorde aircraft didn't really go anywhere <laughs> much, except for uh, rich people. They're trying to make this one uh, commercially viable. So they used SolidWorks to design the entire aircraft, not just pieces of the fuselage or pieces of the interior, but the whole thing, all the CAD, the PDM, simulation, augmented reality, virtual reality. So using SolidWorks to design the entire airplane. They even offered uh, people jobs at SolidWorks World, uh, told them to get, look them up, right, because they need people. This one is a personal one that I really enjoyed um, from SolidWorks on the last day. These two gentlemen, uh, which are art directors and set designers uh, for the Hollywood, spoke about how they use SolidWorks to design the movie sets for films like Oblivion, Passengers, 
Tron Legacy and the Batman vs. Superman movies. Uh, they showed many, many awesome examples which are available in those videos from SOLIDWORKS World that I posted the link up above earlier, um, showing movie sets and how they were designed and some of the challenges they had. Uh, some really, really neat things that we didn't even know were being built uh, and designed in SOLIDWORKS are happening all the time. So the complete bat, the Batmobile model from the Batman vs. Superman movies was totally designed in SOLIDWORKS uh, and, and built live. All right, hopefully you enjoyed our presentation. Uh, next year, SOLIDWORKS World is in Dallas, Texas, February 10th through the 13th. And we have uh, this slide here showing the, up, the upcoming webinars that CATI is going to host. If there's any of these that sound interesting to you, definitely sign up for those. And then uh, there's a link that just got posted in the chat and down at the bottom of this slide where you can sign up for any of these webinars. New webinars are being added uh, every week, so be sure to check out the upcoming webinars. I'm going to take a look over at the chat and see if anybody has any questions for us. If you do have questions, go ahead and type those in the chat window, and hopefully we'll be able to come up with an answer. So we're going to stay on for probably about five more minutes. And if you have any questions, go ahead and type those in. If you need to copy and paste any of those links out of the chat for any of the pages that I put up, uh, go ahead and do that. I don't see any questions on here right now, but we'll, we'll stay for a couple more minutes and see if anybody posts any questions. Thank you for attending, Peter. He put a thanks on here. Uh, by the way, Peter Fisher's user group won uh, user group of the year uh, two or three years ago. So congratulations to him. Uh, that's that's two of our user groups uh, from this area here that uh, have been uh, that have won the user group of the year. So there is a question here um, regarding the desktop metal functionality. wants to know if that approach uh, would or would not work with plastic part design. That's a good question for 3D printing. Um, desktop metal obviously, uh, you know, is, is invested in the idea of printing in metal. Um, I would sure think that that uh, would, would work the same or di slightly differently in uh, plastic part design. I have not seen anything like that for plastic printing, um, but I'm sure once desktop metal, you know, gets that going, I'm sure other people are going to want to do that too. But I do not know. Um, it's definitely for, for metal printing the tool that they have on their printers, of course. Uh, let's see. Someone says uh, on the last slide, we've got a webcast listed, yes, for desktop metal on March 27th. You can't find that one on the website. Um, all right, I'll sure make a note of that and see if that's uh, missing up there and try to get that up. Sorry about that. Um, check back in a couple of days and see if that has been put up there. I'll, I'll definitely get that note to the right person. So someone's chiming in here on the uh, coatings enhancement, the number one, or number two, sorry, number two enhancement of the uh, top ten enhancements being a, a coatings feature. Uh, saying here uh, they see that being beneficial if you allowed, uh, if it allowed you to make a copy with the amount of coating removed from the finished model. Yes, yes. Uh, we manufacture parts from a customer that specifies the amount of hard coat, so we need to machine to pre-coding specs. Okay, yeah, sure. Good, good, good. 
Uh, someone wants to know more about the CAM features of 2018. So very briefly, um, in SOLIDWORKS 2018, uh, a new SOLIDWORKS CAM tool was added. And uh, it's based on the technology from CAMWorks, which has been around for quite a long time. Uh, it does three, two and a half axis, yeah, two and a half, sorry, two and a half axis milling and two axis turning is what the included uh, SOLIDWORKS CAM software gives you. You can, if you need more capability than that, uh, you can expand by adding in the real CAMWorks uh, tools that, that have always been around. And CATI is a CAMWorks reseller. So all of that one-stop shop would come from us, whether it's the SOLIDWORKS CAM or the full-blown CAMWorks tools. So um, I would recommend getting with your uh, sales rep uh, on that and to learn more about the SOLIDWORKS CAM tools. All right, I don't see any other questions in the chat. So thank you everybody for attending. And we look forward to seeing you on another uh, CATI webinar or at SolidWorks World next year in Dallas, Texas. Thanks a lot, everybody.